Welcome to the Easy Extrusion YouTube channel. Grain crops have been known to human beings since prehistoric times. The development of modern civilization began thanks to crops. For example, the growing of sorghum took place in North Africa around 3000 BC. At the same time, India began to cultivate rice, although it was first mentioned in China around 2800 BC. Around that time, Americans had already been cultivating corn. Wild barley and wheat grew in the Middle East from around 10,000 BC. Since ancient times, corn grain has been used by people not only as food, but also as feed for livestock. Forage grains are an important source of feed for animals all across the world. Cows and sheep require 8 kilograms of grain crops per 1 kilogram of body weight. Pigs, on the other hand, require only 4 kilograms of grain crops per 1 kilogram of body weight. Content of grain crops in balanced poultry feed is from 50 to 80 percent. Today, how can grain be consumed for effective feeding? Farmers use various means of processing and preparing feed, including crushing, steaming, yeasting, calcination, fermentation, micronization, and so on. How can we define which technology is effective? Rational technology selection is determined by the ratio of feed quality indicators to the cost of its production. Quality indicators include digestibility and percentage of protein. Let's look at the example of poultry feeding. Raw grain is absorbed by 40 to 50 percent. After crushing, absorption increases by 5 to 10 percent. After steaming from 12 to 14 percent. After rolling from 6 to 25 percent. After fermentation from 10 to 15 percent. Toasting from 2 to 3 percent. Micronization from 25 to 30 percent. Yeasting influences on feed intake, but not on digestion. So, in total, extrusion adds 35 to 40 percent to absorption in poultry feed, adding 8 to 15 percent to the energy value. Extrusion is one of the most effective ways of processing cereals and legumes for better absorption of nutrients. As a result of short-term cooking under temperatures of 100 to 170 degrees centigrade and pressures of up to 50 atm, grain crops keep all of their beneficial qualities and take on a number of significant advantages over the crushed or raw solid grains. Extrusion improves the digestibility of protein. The amino acids become more accessible as a result of breaking the secondary connections of the protein molecules. A short cooking time saves the amino acids from destruction. During extrusion, the walls of fat cells burst. The fats are released and the energy content of the product increases. During the shear and grinding process, the fiber is crushed, which improves its digestibility. But the biggest change we can see in the starch structure. It's known that starch degradation by digestive enzymes is a slow process. In the digestive tract of humans and animals, the starch is hydrolyzed. In other words, it's broken up with the help of water and it's converted into glucose, which is absorbed by the body. Due to extrusion, the amount of native starch is reduced. Extrusion performs most of the work to transform the starch into simple substances. For clarity, let's compare the content of starch in grain crops before and after extrusion as a percentage of their dry weight. The proportion of starch in wheat prior to extrusion is about 49%. After extrusion, it's decreased to 18%. The content of starch in barley prior to extrusion is 50%, while extruded barley contains up to 12% starch. The proportion of starch in peas prior to extrusion is about 26%. After extrusion, it has decreased to 15%. In order to understand what happens in a seed during the extrusion process, it's necessary to know its morphology and chemical structure. Grain contains, depending on its type, 40 to 60% starch. 
starch in its turn can be divided into amylose and amylopectin. Grain crops contain an amylose fraction within 20 to 30 percent of the total amount of starch. Amylose is a coherent glucose molecule that creates long chains of a helix-like shape. Amylopectin is a branched polysaccharide and its fraction is 70 to 80 percent. The ratio of amylose to amylopectin influences the consumer properties of different types of cereal and starch digestibility. Let's consider why. Chains of amylopectin and molecules of amylose create semi-crystalline or crystalline areas in starch granules. These organic structures don't break up in water. Hence, in their natural form, they are resistant to enzymes splitting them. Clearly, it's worse when digested cells have a complex structure, as more energy is spent on the digestion process itself. Through intensive heat treatment on grain seed, these structures are changed at the molecular level. Polysaccharides break down into simple sugars. This actually means that less energy is spent on digestion and more energy is received for the animal's body growth. Thanks to extrusion, we increase the surface area of starch granules and the larger the area, the quicker the reaction, which breaks up amylopectin and amylose. Thus, we more easily obtain glucose, which is the energy needed for growth. Due to this effect, the monoculture is absorbed by both animal and human organism almost completely. Extruded feed increases daily weight gain by 50 to 100 percent, milk yield by 15 to 35 percent, poultry egg production and egg size by 15 to 25 percent. Extruded feed reduces feed intake by 10 to 15 percent, reduces the use of feed grains by 30 to 40 percent, and the death of animals from diseases of the digestive system by 25 to 50 percent. How do we use texturates in everyday life? Just look at how kids enjoy various snacks, like corn curls. Almost all known baby food and confectionery is manufactured with the use of the extrusion method. The human body is unconsciously looking for products which are easy to absorb. But there is another side to this coin. Now we understand that eating these products in large quantity can lead to obesity, diabetes and microflora changes. Many modern foods contain extruded components. Sweets, instant noodles and soups, even dairy and meat products are usually manufactured based on extrusion technology. This is justified by the fact that there is a need to increase the available nutritional value. The world's population is 7 billion and rising. Consumption is constantly growing and the earth is exhausted. We have to accept a new food paradigm. Control our diets. Eat less high calorie foods based on high technology production and take care of both our own bodies and the planet. Having appeared thousands of years ago, grain agriculture has changed our society and helped us progress. But it has also changed our body, forcing it to evolve. It seems that in the third millennium, technology has pushed civilization to a new level of evolution. Rather than fighting the change, we should understand what's happening and take care of ourselves and our planet. I hope that now you know more about extrusion technology and its advantages. Thank you for watching. Leave your comments and suggestions for future videos down below. Like and subscribe to Easy Extrusion channel. Easy Extrusion is easy as it can be.